In this video, we're going to talk about the four main types of taxes. And by taxes, I'm talking about taxes that are imposed on individuals. And so we're not really going to get into corporate taxes or anything like that in this video. So we're just going to be talking about you. You go into a store, you have to pay sales tax. Uh, you make money, you have wages, you have to pay tax on that. And then even, in some cases, when you die, depending on how much money you have, you have to pay tax. So we've got all these different types of taxes, and is there a way that we can think about these different types of taxes and group them? And yes, there's actually a way we can put it into four nice, neat buckets. So when we think about like sales tax and stuff, it's really a tax on a purchase, right? So you, you go into a retail store, and you make a purchase, that's sales tax. Now that sales tax is basically we're going to have like a percentage, maybe it's like 6.8%. Uh, of, of whatever the purchase price was, that's what you get charged uh, by the state or by the county that you that you happen to be in. Now, sales tax, though, isn't the only type of tax that you can have on a purchase. When we think about, also, you might have heard of things like excise taxes. Now, an excise tax is, is kind of seen as like a hidden tax. So just put hidden here. Indirect tax is a nicer way of putting it. Now basically, that's something you're not necessarily going to see on the receipt. It's not going to break out and say excise tax. That's something that was actually imposed on the manufacturer for things like gasoline, gas, cigarettes, alcohol. And so, whereas sales tax is kind of a broad-based tax, right? There are hundreds or thousands of different items. You go to the store, there are all kinds of items. They're going to have sales tax imposed on them. Not everything, right? Like if you buy a house, there's not going to be sales tax. Uh, but, but it's very broad. This is broad. And then excise tax are, are kind of, those taxes are more specific items, right? So so like these here, right? These are going to be more the excise tax. And the excise tax might not necessarily be based on a percentage of the sale price. It might be on however many gallons of gas and, and so forth. So this is important to note. It is different than a sales tax, although it still has to do with the purchase. And then we're also going to have taxes. You have something like a use tax. I'll just put it under here under purchases. Use tax. You go to a national park, you pay twenty dollars to get in. Each time you use uh, the service, you're, you're actually incurring uh, some kind of tax. And then also outside of the U.S., I'm just kind of looking at it from a United States perspective here. But if you're outside the U.S., there's also taxes. In some cases, you might incur called value-added taxes. And it's actually kind of complex, and, and but at least for somebody who lived in the U.S. and might not have encountered this before, so we'll have a separate va uh, video where we talk about value-added taxes, but it's actually uh, very common outside the United States. So those are all taxes that we can think about that affect purchases, but also we can think about taxes on property. And so you might say, well, wait, how can property be taxed? If you've never owned a home before, this might be something that's kind of a foreign concept to you. But when we think about, let me... Put this here. When we think about property taxes, we think generally about real estate. So when you own a home, so if you're just renting a home, you, you don't really have to worry about property uh, taxes. But if you own a home, uh, you're going to be charged uh, these property taxes, right? Now the property taxes are going to be more local, right? So we're, we're this is this is kind of a local tax, and the reason is it's going to fund things like your public your local public school district, right? And, and it might, you know, fund the local government as well and so forth. But usually people uh, kind of associate real estate taxes uh, with, with the school district. Now, when we think about real estate taxes, what they're going to do is they're going to come up with an assessment for the value of your home, right? So they say, oh, you know what, I think your home is worth $70,000. And then whatever the percentage rate is, let's say it's 1.5% for your locality, you know, it d depends on where you live, of course, then you're going to get assessed an annual tax. And if you don't pay your real estate taxes on your home, you can lose your home. And that's kind of a weird concept to people who never owned a home before. They might think, hey, I, I bought the home. I paid my mortgage to the bank. I've done all this. I own the home, right? I own it. Well, yes, but you have to pay your property taxes on, on your home every year. And real estate isn't the only type of property tax. Uh, you also have something called personal property tax. So personal property tax, and, and this might be a little more confusing. Now, this isn't every state or every locality does not have personal property tax, but it is quite common. And this would be something uh, like you own a car or you own a boat or there's something. And it's, a, it's the same idea as real estate where they're going to assess the value 
of your car or boat and then whatever that percentage rate is you know 2.3 percent or whatever wherever, wherever you happen to live then you're going to have a local tax right that's going to just going to be on that uh, for example where i live so i own two cars and so every year i have to you know come declare these items and pay per, uh, property tax on them right so in any event um, so it's not just real estate that we're thinking about when we're thinking about taxes on property now we also have tax on wealth now you might think hey what is the tax on wealth what are we talking about are you talking about income tax no this is different and that's actually what we're going to get to to next is tax on income tax on wealth and, and let me just make sure you can see but so there's actually a, a, a very clear distinction between taxes on wealth and on income and to some of you that might seem weird and you might think aren't these two things the exact same thing well when we think about a tax on income so let's say you made forty thousand dollars this year at your job right that's your income your wealth is money that you already have right so if you have let's say ten thousand dollars in the bank and it's not income that you made this year let's say you didn't make any money this year but you've had it from previous years that you made you've already paid tax you already paid income tax on it now it's just sitting on the bank that is wealth and you might say well hey people can tax that it's already been taxed it was taxed when I made it as income well it can be taxed again and it basically it's we think of it as a death tax so this is kind of the way people call it but the, the more proper way is we think of it's an well let me change colors here again we, we think of it as the estate tax and it's a tax on your estate state tax so the estate taxes you let's say you have you know X amount of assets you have cars you have money in the bank you have all these things and you die and you decide that you want to leave uh, the, these belongings to to your your heirs right to to you know your children or to other people right so when your your belongings right after you die your belongings we call that that's your estate right this consists of all your belongings right and we're gonna net out things like you had unpaid bills and so forth and that that's gonna be deducted and so forth as they pay the bills but ultimately you're gonna come up with this estate right and then that estate can be taxed depending on how much wealth is in this estate right if you have an estate that has fifty thousand dollars of assets uh, then it's probably gonna be exempted uh, you know under the current rules but if you meet a certain threshold if your estate is large enough it can incur federal estate tax right? so I want to have a separate video on estate tax so don't get too hung up on it but but main idea and, and some people call you know the death tax here and also now this so this is a federal tax but also you in some cases in some states you actually have an inheritance tax as well and that's also kind of known as a death tax so these are these are both death taxes inheritance tax is just slightly different and the main key is you know with estate tax is federal inheritance tax is usually imposed by the state but the estate tax whereas that tax is actually incurred by the estate itself and is taken out right so that chunk or whatever that tax is is taken out of the estate before any money is given to the heirs right the inheritance tax is different in that it's a tax on the heirs right so the the people who inherit the belongings now they are they are incurring the tax right so if your uncle died and you got 10 million dollars or so forth the inheritance taxes is, is going to tax you because you're the heir and that might happen at the state level depending on where you live the federal level the estate tax is like before before you even get any of that money from your uncle that goes through the federal estate tax first and we'll have different videos on that and then just one one more key kind of point is there's also a tax on wealth called the gift tax and basically the gift tax was invented so that people didn't try and avoid the estate tax and, and the main idea is this that if you give a certain amount of money to somebody uh, before while you're still alive you haven't died and you give you know the 50 million dollars that your uncle gives you he the person giving the gift right so the giver incurs tax and you might say well hey wait a minute why, why would somebody incur that they just gave me 50 million dollars they already paid income tax on it but the idea is they're trying to prevent you from giving away your estate 
before like if like if you're like well i'm on my deathbed i'm just going to give everything away as a gift and then when i die i don't have to pay estate tax so actually the gift tax is just there to prevent you from doing that and and it, it just doesn't if you give 500 bucks to your kid because they're having financial problems that doesn't meet the threshold we'll have another video where we talk about the specifics of the gift tax uh, but it's usually it has to be a substantial gift so and, and lastly, we're just to talk about income, and this is probably the type of tax that, that you're most familiar with. And when we think about an income tax, let me, let me change colors here again. When we think about an income tax, uh, usually we're just thinking about, oh, well, April 15th in the U.S., we've got, we've got this deadline. I'll just, I'll just call this, we'll just call this income tax. I don't have a better way. So we have this deadline, and we have to pay our income tax. Uh, to the federal government and in some cases you have to pay pay state and local as well so let, let me so you have federal income tax then you have state and you may in some cases have local and some states don't have an income tax but most do so you have these different different income taxes right you have to file a tax return uh, but there's also another tax on income which for some people is actually greater uh, in magnitude than, than what this income tax is uh, and that's called the FICA tax. And you might have seen FICA on your W-2 if you, if you work in the U.S. And so the FICA actually has two components to it as well. And you know maybe I should maybe I should change colors here again. So FICA, uh, we've got Medicare that this goes to fund, and then also Social Security. Sometimes people just refer to the whole tax here as Social Security tax. And these are basically these are two government programs, Medicare and Social Security. We're gonna have separate videos on these. Uh, Medicare is basically providing uh, medical benefits uh, to, to um, insurance to uh, people in the age of 65 or older, but not just that. Also, in some cases, if you're younger and you're disabled, there's some other people that also can benefit from Medicare as well. Social Security, um, we actually think of, or at least most people think of, as just you know benefits for uh, retirees. Right, you reach a certain age and you start getting uh, these social security payments that help you in, in your uh, when, when your elder years to, with income. Uh, but in addition to that, there's also like uh, survivors benefits, and then all um, to somebody who was like the, their parent died, and then also there's benefits if you are disabled, if you have a disability, and you can also get social security benefits. And in any event, when you when you when you see FICA, uh, it's funding Medicare and Social Security. Uh, so, so when we think about, I mean, the, the, obviously there are a lot of taxes going on here. I try not to get overwhelmed. We're actually going to have videos on each type of these taxes to kind of explain them in a little more detail. I just wanted to give you an idea of kind of these categories, right? You go into a store, you make a purchase, you can be taxed that way. You own property, right? You can be taxed on the property you own. And then you can be taxed on the wealth that you have either when you die or if you try and give that wealth away before you die. And then also uh, in terms of just income, probably the one we're most familiar with, uh, when you make money, you have to pay tax on it in most cases. And then also we not just have that income tax, but we also have, at least in the United States, we have this FICA tax that's substantial as well.